All right. We'll go ahead and get started then. Um, I guess anyone who comes in a little later uh, can just kind of catch up where we're at. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Um, see if I can. If you if you're near it, just go ahead and give me a green check. Excellent. Okay, just a basic uh, way to interface with the session today. Um, if you want to talk, um, go ahead and raise your hand and uh, then press the talk button um, after you're recognized. Um, otherwise, you can use the checks, uh, text box at the bottom here to uh, text chat during the session as well. So welcome to Tips for Successful Virtual uh, Class Sessions. Um, my name is Cameron Wills. I'm a research associate here at Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center. Um, today, I'm going to go through, uh, we'll just do probably some text chat introductions I think would be good. Uh, we'll talk about virtual uh, class sessions, some of the challenges associated with them, how to prepare, um, how to manage your classes, and uh, how to manage your online sessions, and then uh, just a couple follow-up things. So um, just a couple guidelines, like I said, uh, use checkbox, the text chat box to ask questions or comment during the sessions. If you're interested in speaking, go ahead and raise your hand, and I'll um, uh, recognize you with the uh, audio permissions. And then. Um, the way that the session is going to work is I'm just going to give some uh, content and then we'll discuss those content and certain checkpoints. So uh, start off uh, in the text box if you want to just give uh, your department, um, if you've hosted or attended an online virtual class session before today, um, and then just uh, maybe a couple basic things that you're seeking to learn or one basic thing that you're uh, seeking to learn today. All right, chat looks good. I uh, think you've a little piece of information that helps me sort of understand where everyone's at and, you know, sort of cater my presentation a little bit more to your needs. So, um, so just starting off, uh, virtual class sessions for uh, the way I'm defining it is just instruction that's held through a synchronous online communication service. The two that we support at NIU are Blackboard Collaborate and Adobe Connect. Um, another popular one that's not not as robust, is, uh, but very popular and ubiquitous is Skype. Um, so some of the things that we talk about um, will, be, uh, um, will be applicable to Skype, but most of the things we're talking about are, are mainly pertain to Blackboard Collaborate and Adobe Connect. So the first question that I always uh, lead with when people are asking you know, or inquiring about a new technology um, they want to use it is, does it solve a problem? Um, it sounds like for most of us in here that this will solve some sort of problem. Um, you know, conducting an online or blended classroom, you know, it helps cater to students who are distance learners or um, opening up you know, class sessions outside of normal class time that students uh, may normally be at home. <clears throat> but um, it's always good to ask yourself, you know, does, does this solve a problem and do I need to conduct a virtual, virtual class session or might this be a uh, better discussion for, um, you know, that would be better um, better uh, explored on a discussion board, you know, text-based, uh, et cetera. 
So some of the challenges that we, we face when uh, conducting virtual online uh, sessions is that there's limited visual and oral communication cues. Um, whereas normally in a face-to-face -face session, you know, I'd be able to see everyone's face, be able to uh, see if they were listening or whether they were engaged. Um, and, and so in these formats, that can sometimes be a challenge. Um, also, ma uh, managing text or audio chat, uh, these are different um, different ways that people are interfacing with you, and so uh, getting accustomed to how to manage questions in the text, um, how to deal with people who want to speak, um, these are these are unique challenges to online sessions. Um, answering questions um, is a little different in this, um, this platform, the way that uh, that's ordered. Uh, connection issues are obviously a concern. Um, dealing with people with different uh, levels of internet service. A um, while back, we were hosting an online session here at NIU, and the firewall uh, sort of bugged out, and we lost all of our uh, session members. So um, it's always uh, you know, finicky when we're dealing with online uh, you know, technologies uh, that those connection issues uh, rise quite often. So. Um, and then the, the last thing I hear is a little less flexibility. Um, in online, uh, in a face-to-face -face session, you know, in your conventional classroom, you're a little more flexible. You know, if um, if you didn't, if you got to add something to a PowerPoint, it's easy as going over, editing something real quick, or popping over to um, a web browser and, and pulling something up. Um, it's a little more rigid when you when you when you speak on or when you present online. So preparation is really key here. Um, some other unique challenges that pertain to students is they're not always ready for online sessions. You know, this, for for um, some of them, it's the first time. They're not really sure what they should be doing. Um, for some of them, the technology access isn't necessarily there. They're not sure. You know, their their hardware may not be up to snuff in terms of being able to host um, you know, video capabilities. They might have a web camera. Uh, they might have a, a microphone. Uh, internet capabilities vary. Um, between um, users, uh, there's also distractions. You know, we're dealing with computers, and so uh, students normally when they're using computers, and you know, might be using it to play games or browse the internet. And so those distractions are 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 constant in front of them, and it's hard to check in on them because you're not there, you're not seeing what they're what they're doing online. And so it's very easy for them to sort of tune out and get distracted by other uh, technologies. Um, Another issue um, that arises quite often in these sessions is passivity. So students, again, because they're not necessarily uh, engaged and you're not able to sort of uh, see them directly, um, they, they may not um, participate like they, they would normally in a face-to-face -face session. And then uh, the last thing that sort of relates to that is the idea of presence, you know, whether they um, feel like they're really part of the, the session, you know, if they're just kind of watching like they would a movie or something mindlessly in the background, um, and so these are, these are unique challenges to these sessions that um, we need to sort of uh, address. <clears throat> One way. Um, to sort of get an idea of what you can expect with these sessions is to do a simple survey um, in, in your class, um, asking students, you know, about the computers, about the internet connection, and about timing uh, in regards to scheduling, um, making sure that the times that you want to meet uh, work for them. Uh, these little class surveys will help quite a bit with that. So I want to take this time uh, to sort of ask what other challenges you can think of. Feel free to use the check the uh, text chat or raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Um, take, a, we'll say, two minutes here to sort of um, see what questions you guys come up with and we, we can address them. Okay, so I got two questions in the checks box here. One, the first one from Isabel is, um, how does one require synchronous participation when online classes are supposed to be flexible for all types of schedules and time zones? Um, 
I don't necessarily think you have to require synchronous participation. That's um, sort of up to you and how you format your class. Um, certainly, uh, if it's an expectation that's established in the beginning, um, that you'll have regular meetings online at this time and date, uh, that's not too different from, you know, just how you how you normally conduct uh, a class, you know, or there are certain times that you're expected to be there. Um, as I think this flexibility um, still plays into it, though. You know, the students are able to be wherever they're at um, and and log in. They don't necessarily have to drive to campus. You know, a lot of them that's you know 40 minutes, an hour away. Um, but certainly, uh, they can be optional as well. I mean, you can just have optional uh, synchronous online uh, participation sessions um, uh, as part of your course. It really depends on how you'd like to format it. And then Melissa has, uh, can students use their phones as well? Um, it depends on the, the, the technology. I know that um, for Blackboard Collaborate and for Skype, that they, they can. Um, the, there are platforms there. Um, that are uniquely designed for mobile participation so that um, any, anyone in here right now could uh, join this session using the Blackboard Collaborate application, and that's for both Android and iOS. Um, Isabel, I, 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 say, I would say that they could be used, uh, but not necessarily should. Um, I, I would say that they, they could be used um, as you know, if it, if it fixes the problem for the student, you know, it really uh, a dedicated computer is probably a better platform than a mobile platform, um, just because it's more robust. But um, students certainly would have the flexibility if they're on the go and they wanted, you know, but they had to be in a, in a session um, and, they'll, and they only had their phone. Can you can you see these? Um, let's ask is asks, uh, can you save these chats and have them watch later if they aren't available to do it live? The answer for Blackboard Collaborate is and Adobe Connect is yes. Um, actually, right now, I'm recording this session uh, to make it available uh, a, little later, a little later on this week. Um, so with this, with this platform, which we all have access to, yes. Yes, absolutely, you can. All right, well, um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next um, next section here. If you uh, if you guys all have uh, questions, feel free to post them uh, in the chat box or directly to me. Um, or uh, we can, if you want to jot them down, take notes. Uh, if we have time at the end, you can answer or ask them in that Q&A session. All right. So as I mentioned before, um, when having these virtual online uh, sessions, preparation is really key. And so this is actually probably the bulk of my presentation is actually just talking about how we prepare to, um, uh, to host these uh, online uh, sessions. So uh, first questions are, are pretty general. Um, if anyone has taught before is sort of familiar with them, asking who is my audience, what are my objectives, and what is my format? These are all things that are going to inform how we set up um, our presentations, how we set up uh, the settings for our room, um, and how we engage with students when the session is uh, active. Uh, the very first thing you're going to want to do is, once you're, you're sure that you <coughs> want to do an online session, is to get that date and time out uh, to your students as soon as possible. Um, this will help them plan in advance and um, we'll, we'll sort of make your life easier as well. Um, the other thing is to make those links very easy to find. It's easy in Blackboard once you have created a, um, a, a session uh, date um, using the Clap, uh, Blackboard Collaborate plugin tool to sort of just post that like you would an uh, assignment or a test so that it's there um, for students to see. And the last thing too is to just provide uh, time for students to test their connections in advance. Uh, this is especially important, it, important if you want to require attendance or require students to even present online. Um, for, to give them a time, a uh, day or two, a week in advance for them to jump in and play around um, with the software to make sure it works for them. Uh, 
Uh, next slide we have here is uh, the format. So deciding on the format um, based on how, what your objectives for the session are, whether it's going to be very presentation heavy, uh, sort of like this one is where I'm doing a lot of talking, a lot of present, presentation, presentation of material, or if it be more discussion based where it's more back and forth uh, between students uh, and yourself or students and students. Um, with that too, um, asking if you want to do video chat, audio chat, text chat, um, all these things should be tested in advance. Um, and, and so it's both you and uh, students are comfortable using them. Uh, welcome, Tracy. <coughs> so some of the, the types of questions, um, uh, or having the, the questions for your sessions, um, their, your goals and objectives are ready for the session begins, whether that's an online presentation or an offhand document for you to reference. Um, and then when you're uh, having sessions and you're asking questions to ask, make sure to ask focused questions um, and not just uh, general questions. Make sure to target them towards students um, so that they know that it's, otherwise it's sort of like just speaking to the screen and the students really don't know how to react. But if you, if you call it individual students, then they'll feel motivated to uh, respond. Um, as far as uh, presentation design goes, you know, using PowerPoint, um, try to keep your presentation simple. Don't try to use a lot of um, abstract imagery. Um, don't try to use really artful, um, distracting uh, templates. Uh, something that's plain like this uh, usually does just fine. Also try to use larger fonts. I would recommend not going any lower than uh, 24 point um, using, you know, an Arial font, nothing with uh, a lot of sort of serif accents or um, anything that uh, looks busy um, on t uh, online. A lot of the, the sans serif fonts, Arial, Calibre, et cetera, are, are much better uh, for this format. And then the last thing is to just try to keep your uh, slide information short. Um, slides are free, so <laughs> um, don't try to pack a lot of uh, information onto one screen at a time. If you do decide to use images, uh, make sure that those images are powerful and relevant to the material that you're discussing. Um, I would maybe even suggest um, having a whole slide dedicated to just the image if, if it's uh, something that you want to discuss. Um, and then also try to include interactive elements to involve your audience, whether that's activities, you want them to browse um, the internet to find a resource, you know, and post the URL. Um, or the link, uh, doing question checkpoints like I'm doing um, in, uh, in my uh, session right now, um, or having large swaths of time dedicated to just uh, informal discussion as well. Um, any way that you can make sure that the students are just sitting there being, being passive and, and listening to you speak um, and being able to sort of check out and you know, browse, uh, browse Google for whatever. Um, So one of the things I suggest uh, doing for students too uh, when you're sort of designing your, your presentation is the first slide um, being catered to just uh, an introduction to uh, the session so the students know they're in the right place, um, they know when the uh, session starts, anything they might need to do to prepare. So we saw with this, um, you know, just used to, to use this session as an example, um, here I have my title. Uh, start time in a task uh, to complete the audio setup wizard. So something like that uh, pretty, works pretty well to sort of uh, comfort students so they know in the right place and uh, get them prepared. Other slides uh, outside the title slide that you may want to include, um, and we, we I, I followed this format as well, is to um, you know, post uh, interaction slides, so how to use the talk feature, the chat feature, um, set up an agenda for the day or for the session, 
um, and then sort of session guidelines, how they can expect the, the format of the session to go and, and what their expectations are. Welcome, Alicia. Glad to have you with us. So once you have your, your session um, PowerPoint or presentation materials ready, uh, make sure to review um, all your materials or discussion questions that you might have if you're doing just a, a strict instruction um, or a strict discussion, making sure that you have those questions ready and that um, they'll, they'll be appropriate for the format. Don't ask to necessarily, you know, say demonstrate something um, if you're not able to see your students. Um, Make sure to test any features you want to use. So if you want to use uh, video chat, make sure that you test that. Make sure that it works for you. Um, using uploading PowerPoint presentations in advance and making sure that that uh, works in your machine work, uh, is, 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 is key as well. Um, also make sure to record, record your voice or just review your voice. Um, Blackboard Collaborate has a nice feature for that where you do a quick recording of your voice so you can sort of evaluate it for uh, if you need to speak more clearly or louder or softer, um, making sure that, that that works and they're presenting at a, um, a, a comfortable volume and, and you're speaking very clearly. Uh, and the last thing you may consider doing is practicing an online session with a colleague, uh, a teaching assistant, a graduate assistant to make sure that uh, the session goes roughly at least how you expect it to go. A couple more slides here. Um, preparing your environment, try to find a place that's quiet and free from distraction. Uh, turn off anything on your computer with notifications. Um, email, Skype, uh, other instant messaging systems so they're not popping up uh, as you're presenting. Try to dim your lighting. Um, I've drawn my shades here. You probably can still see that white coming through the background here, but um, something to not have such a, a, a bright setting. Um, try to move any distractions you may have behind you. Uh, don't leave the TV on. <laughs> um, post do not disturb notices around your area um, so that people aren't coming in knocking on your door. Um, and then finally in this one um, I always fall for is turning off your phone ringer. Um, it's nothing you know, sort of offsetting than having a conversation with someone online or presenting and then all of a sudden uh, your awkward uh, ringtone goes off and derails everything. A couple of things to prepare yourself, you know, dress well um, and then have your outline and materials ready. We already talked about, uh, you know, practicing, but um, your students may, you know, come in their pajamas <laughs> in a t-shirt but you as the instructor are going to want to dress well to sort of maintain that uh, professionalism. So a couple uh, preparation things now that we've gone through, um, designed our slides, practiced, um, and got our environment ready, uh, we can create session. Uh, with Blackboard Collaborate, you can actually create your session well in advance, um, or you can do it on the fly. Um, Generally, I'd recommend doing it uh, in advance so students have that link uh, ready, uh, ready to go and they know where to find it. Oh, yes, I see Isabel has got a uh, mention here. Yes, using neutral colors and dress uh, without too many patterns uh, of stripes uh, or patterns or stripes, um, that's useful so that your uh, webcam doesn't uh, sort of freak out when it's trying to pick up um, the images in the room are, are, are motion. Um, thank you, Isabel, for that. Yes, uh, neutral colors. Um, and then, so once we've created the session, making sure that students also have access to support information. Um, Blackboard and Adobe Connect both um, have great uh, support. Um, you can post links for them there. If you have uh, the privilege of having another colleague or TA or GA who's familiar um, with, the, with the programs, it's always nice to have them sort of be a backup as a bond is for me for any technical issues that may arise during the session. 
So again, um, trying to have a, a greeting slide prepared. Um, you don't necessarily need to greet everyone as they arrive. Uh, this is especially true in sessions where you have, you know, 50 to 60 students. You don't have to uh, greet everyone as they come in. Um, and then one thing to sort of prep students uh, is to ask them to take notes during the session. It's sort of a maybe a cheap way to keep them involved, but uh, I think it, it helps to, to remind them, you know, not just to be passive, but to actually try to um, be in the class as they as they normally would and uh, and take those notes. And the last thing, um, get yourself logged in, you know, 30 to 45 minutes before the start of your session. Um, open up your session to your students at least 10 to 15 minutes to give them uh, a chance to get settled in. And then, uh, especially with students, allowing up to five minutes after the start time for, for them to come in um, before you really get into any heavy material. Because uh, students are going to trickle in, they'll have hang-ups with their browser or connection. And so giving them a the little bit of, wind of a window there um, is, is, is very courteous for them. All right, so at this checkpoint, uh, any questions or comments that um, everyone has about preparation, uh, again, feel free to use the text chat box or to raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Melissa asks, um, she says that she sees me wearing a microphone, is, is this required? Um, it is not necessarily required. Um, if you have a webcam, they generally have um, a microphone built in, but you, you're going to want to make sure that if you want to use the audio feature, um, that you have some sort of uh, microphone de um, kind of device. I recommend getting a USB um, microphone, so it's going to be a standard USB. Um, these have better sound quality than some of the traditional two-pronged um, uh, headsets that exist. I think a, a lot of headsets nowadays, if not most new headsets, are going to be USB-based just because the sound quality is so much better. Hello, Renee. Welcome. All right. Well, if there's no more questions, I'm going to sort of get into the management uh, section next. Um, so uh, when asking questions to the audience, um, it generally helps to ask them to specific people. So picking someone out from the crowd to uh, ask a question to. Um, otherwise, if you just ask general questions, uh, you'll get a lot of silence. <laughs> So having those those targeted questions helps quite a bit. Um, but if you want to ask uh, general, you know, questions generally, uh, it helps to have that follow up with an action. So either a hand raise, you know, telling people that hand raise to speak, um, providing a yes no uh, sort of question um, to the audience to get them engaged, or have them respond with an emote. Should I um, speed up? Should I slow down? Is, does everyone understand? Is this confusing? Use, a, use the emote, to, um, emote feature to signify uh, how, you, how, you, how you're feeling. Um, so if anyone wants to right now, if you can see, um, there's a smiley face uh, icon on the left-hand side underneath. That should be my name. Um, just go ahead and, and choose one of those to let me know that uh, you can see that. Lisa's confused, getting applause, some applause, some smiley faces. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so Melissa's asking uh, in the chat box here, can students use Blackboard Collaborate for groups as well? Uh, yes, yes, they can. Um, you can do this for uh, small groups, large groups. You could have open rooms where students can come in uh, sort of, you know, on a whim and uh, collaborate as well. Um, uh, 
she follows that up with, uh, do they set it up or does she? Um, you will you will set up those rooms. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Blackboard Collaborate in particular, we do host uh, a lot of regular sessions on it, and we do have some archive videos hosted on, on um, niu.edu slash factdev. Um, so at the end, uh, Melissa, since I, I have that, um, I'll actually send that in a, the follow-up email, uh, some of the resources that we have uh, to help you out with those. I'll write that down for myself real quick. All right. <clears throat> Uh, so the next thing is just managing audio chat. Um, in general, I think what works really well in the room uh, is having students raise their hand to speak. Um, that sort of prevents the, the chaos from ensuing. You can also, if you want to have a more lax environment, you can just um, change the setting, especially in Black, and I'm speaking specifically towards Blackboard Collaborate. Um, to uh, allow uh, X number of simultaneous speakers. I believe the default is three speakers at once. Um, <clears throat> but depending on what kind of format you're setting up, how many students that you have, um, and how you'd like the session to go, you may limit that to two or to one, um, where <clears throat> students would have to pass, essentially, the virtual mic around um, to, to hold discussions. Um, and again, uh, I have this on here just to really drive this point home, um, is that when you're asking questions again and you want students <coughs> to respond, um, making sure you let them know and, and targeting them uh, in those questions. So I want to go ahead and try that out right now. Um, someone wants to try and uh, do an audio chat, just uh, say hello. <laughs> So what you'll do is you'll just raise your hand, and then um, you'll press the uh, talk button uh, right below the, the webcam. All right. Let's see. You can go ahead. Were you able to hear me? Yes. Yes, can you and then do I have to turn the talk button off to stop? Yes. There we go. Renee, you want to go ahead and try? Hi, everyone. It's Renee. Hi, Renee. <laughs> okay, joined a little late, but now I'm here. This is That's cool. Right. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. So just those sort of um, etiquette things help, goes a long ways in, in keeping your sessions uh, organized and, and flowing efficiently. Um, and again, having those set up in the guidelines and, and making sure students know how to interact and being prepared to uh, do a little bit of light troubleshooting um, helps quite a bit as well. <clears throat> So some specific management uh, things that I want to touch on is uh, talking about large sessions. Um, especially if you have classrooms you know, that have hundreds of students, um, I don't have it on here, it might help to, to break those out to have groups of students um, that attend at different times um, or do their own breakout groups and having uh, GAs or TAs training them on using the technology. Um, even if you have a session that's 20 to 30 people, having another person um, on the side to sort of moderate text chat, um, you know, giving people permissions at different times, uh, it goes it goes a long way to uh, making making the session a little more smooth. Um, in general, with the larger sessions too, I, I would recommend turning off the chat features by default. Um, and then enabling them one by one. So technically, everyone has chat permissions right now in this room so that they could just talk. Um, they could talk over me if they wanted to. I just set up the etiquette um, so you raise your hand to, to talk without me having to necessarily give you permissions. In larger sessions, you may want to have that chat feature turned off and turned it on 
uh, for the individual who wants to speak and then turn it off again once they're, once they're done. In small sessions, it's a, a little more opposite, so you might want to consider opening up um, video and audio rights to more individuals right off the bat so that um, they can sort of choose when to talk or choose when to present themselves. Um, especially in small groups, it's easier, I think, for people to sort of manage themselves so they're not talking over others. Um, so, so being more lax with those uh, those rights right off the bat um, can can create a, a better environment uh, depending on the format. Um, and then also, I would say uh, with the small sessions is to increase the interactive elements. So, doing more um, discussion pieces, doing more of the checkpoints, doing more of the activities. Um, whereas in the larger sessions, it's uh, it becomes more and more like herding cats and it's hard to get everyone on the same page uh, and, and, and doing things as, as they need to be. Um, but in small groups, you, you definitely have more of the flexibility to, to do uh, the interactive uh, pieces. Uh, so the last thing I have from uh, just basic management is uh, being prepared to deal with connection issues. It's always good to plan for the worst. Um, you know, be prepared for everything to to fail, <laughs> and how you want to follow that up. You know, if the class session doesn't work out at all, um, either rescheduling or posting the materials um, online for students to review. Um, having some sort of plan B in in the worst case scenario goes uh, a long way in making sure that you're not pulling your hair out when um, the internet goes out. Um, and with that, I, 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 it's very important to communicate to the students that will be participating the importance of good internet connectivity. Um, wired is always better than wireless. Uh, it's more stable. Um, if students are in a wireless environment, trying to be, identify and be close to the router or access point um, that's transmitting the, the wireless internet signal uh, will give them uh, a better um, connection to the, the session. Um, you as an instructor, if you can record the sessions uh, in case students disconnect for whatever reason so they can go back and review it later uh, is uh, really essential. Um, a lot of most, a lot if not most courses I've been in have had the sessions recorded so that um, participants could go back or students could go back and review later. <coughs> And then the last thing is just to, to have, make sure to have those backup materials. Uh, like I said, you know, it, if um, if something fails to be able to um, basically touch on all the objectives that you had, the goals, um, anything that you can do to not lose uh, your progress or your your place in your curriculum. So at this checkpoint, I'll uh, take a couple minutes to uh, take questions or comments specifically about management. Uh, again, text chat or raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Definitely feel free to, to speak out loud. I know that's faster than, than, than typing. Um, and we have a small enough group that uh, it shouldn't be a problem to address questions that way as well. Most ask uh, if video works the same way as talk, uh, except that you can see the person. Um, they're actually, and, and Blackboard specifically, they're two separate channels. So I could actually turn off my audio but keep my video going, um, or vice versa. This could be a totally um, audio, audio narrated session. Um, but I'm choosing to use uh, video in particular to increase my, my presence, to, to make it feel more like it's not uh, this. Uh, you know, you're not watching a video, but I'm actually here um, interacting with you. I see Melissa's typing, so. Melissa asks uh, if you would ever use this to see students. Um, the answer is that you can, yes. Um, and, it, and again, I would recommend doing that in small groups. Uh, the way that works specifically in Blackboard 
is that as the student speaks or as the main speaker, um, you know, gets picked up, their video will get flashed much like mine is right here. So um, if you wanted to try it out, actually, because everyone has um, audio and video rights, you could uh, hit the talk button and hit the video button to, to show up here. So unless I see you have your hand raised, if you want to go ahead and do those things, uh, feel free. So do I push talk and video? Yes. Yes. I can, I can hear you fine. One second. So I think I pushed video, but I don't see me. Uh, yes, I don't, I don't see you uh, either. So um, you you have a, a camera on your the computer you're using? Oh, there I am. Wow. <laughs> um, you also hit the, end the, the preview button, too. Um, and the, the, there's two options for the video on Blackboard. One is the actual video, and then the one off to the right, it's got a little magnifying glass. That's just a preview. So how do I turn it on? Do you know? Yeah, just uh, hit video. You can hit the the preview to turn it off, and then uh, hit video to the left, you know, the left side of that button, essentially. So I clicked video, but I don't see myself. And when I clicked the preview, the little blue light came on, and I could see myself, but you couldn't see me. Hmm. Um. I'm not sure. I couldn't. Maybe just click it a couple more times. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's locked. Um, that's kind of odd that it would do it for the preview and not uh, for the video itself. Um, let me see something real quick. I'll let I'll let somebody else take a turn. See if it works for them. Sure. Ivan, uh, perhaps uh, could you try? Hey, Yvonne. All right. Um, so Renee asks uh, if students have access to this tool, uh, if all students have access to the tool who are taking online courses. Um, the answer uh, is yes. If you make it available, the students will have access to it. This is something that's built into Blackboard. Um, so that is when you when you create these sessions, uh, um, students will have, have access to them. You just have to, to post the link and make it available. Um, again, if you're if you're interested in learning about Blackboard in particular or Adobe Connect, which is another service or service that the university offers, but specifically Blackboard for NIU, um, or for um, specifically Blackboard for faculty development. Um, we, we host regular workshops on, on those as well. So Alicia, I see you there. Um, welcome. Um, all right, any, any questions or comments um, about management online? All righty. So just... Um, after your session, after everything's done, uh, you've, re you've recorded, um, it always, I, I think, is useful to sort of have a review of that session, whether it's the materials or anything that came up. Sometimes um, in online sessions, students will bring uh, up a topic uh, that was not covered or that uh, couldn't be answered on the fly. And so this is a great opportunity to uh, address some of those questions uh, or comments that they may have made uh, through email or Blackboard announcement. Um, and then, um, especially when you're starting out, uh, ask for feedback. You know, ask, ask students how it went, what they liked, what they didn't like, um, and constantly be evolving uh, your practice and, 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 and your familiarity with uh, the software um, through that feedback. So this is real short. Um, questions or comments about follow-up? All right. <laughs> Alicia says no. <laughs> um, all right, so just kind of wrapping up here, uh, additional tips that I have for you is uh, when you're starting out, just start simple. Uh, use simple presentations. Um, do simple activities, simple discussions. 
Um, do them short. I would not, you know, necessarily recommend doing an hour-long uh, class session. Maybe start with half hour, uh, see how that goes, um, and then sort of expand from there. Um, again, um, trying to add more interactivity as you feel comfortable with the software. You don't necessarily need to start out right away with adding uh, a bunch of stops, a bunch of checkpoints, activities um, online. Um, but as you feel more comfortable, definitely add those things. It increases, uh, it enhances the student experience um, and, uh, and, and engagement with these online tools and you know, makes them look forward to it. Um, and then the last thing is uh, whatever software you end up using, whether it be Adobe um, Connect or Blackboard Collaborate or Skype or um, any host of different uh, web conferencing tools out there, uh, try 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 to learn the uh, advanced features. Um, get very familiar with it so that you're more flexible, you're more responsive, and you can really use it to the the best of its ability. All right, I see I already have a couple questions here, but at this time, if you want to um, add questions to the the chat box, I'll answer them. Or if you'd like to. Um, use the audio to, to ask a question, just uh, go ahead and raise your hand. Um, so Melissa asks, is what we see on the right side just a regular PowerPoint? Yes. And something I didn't have in this presentation um, that I want to touch on is that when you're using Blackboard Collaborate in particular, and I believe this is true for Adobe Connect too, but I'm not positive, is um, you don't get some of the, um, it, it's a very static presentation. It's basically, Making images of your PowerPoint slides, so you don't get the um, the, the transitions, the fancy animations, etc. It's 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 very static. Um, but you can take any PowerPoints you have and and um, upload them to Blackboard Collaborate. Next question here is from Isabel. Uh, she's asking if it can be used for student presentations where they might show our PowerPoints or videos they created. Um, PowerPoints, uh, yes, the videos can sometimes get a little tricky. Um, but yes, they, they, they definitely can, uh, when you get to the point where you're ready um, and you're familiar enough with the software, you can certainly use that for student presentations. Uh, they just have to have the permissions. So, uh, you know, once you're familiar enough with them, you can sort of relay, you know, um, this is where you load your PowerPoint in. Make sure not to use fancy animations, et cetera. Um, but yes, um, giving students permission to um, to present online is something you certainly can do. Uh, next question is from Renee. Uh, can you assign a certain group of students in each class to join a session or discuss questions? Um, yes, you can. Um, Again, if you were, if you're interested in learning more about Blackboard Collaborate and how that can uh, how you can set up groups, um, we do offer regular workshops and we have archived materials online for sessions where we we talk about those things in particular. Um, in Blackboard, you can set up separate sessions, or using Blackboard Collaborate, you can set up different sessions, or actually, or within a one session, you can create breakout groups um, as well. Any more questions uh, at this time? Raise your hand if you do, or you know, if you start typing, I'll see that you're typing. All right. So I am recording the session, so I'll, we'll make it available online. We also have um, sessions for different um, uh, different technologies, especially Blackboard Collaborate. These are available online for you to review. Um, it's the same sort of format that we had here today. It's just uh, that it's the recording. Um, so feel free to use uh, that resource, and I'll, I'll be sure in the, my follow-up email to you all that I send you the archive link. Um, if you're interested, follow faculty development. We post uh, regular um, resources on our, fact, uh, our Facebook and, and Twitter uh, feeds. And if you're interested um, in, in contacting me about any of these issues or setting up a time to um, get a one-on-one -on -one using Blackboard Collaborate, et cetera, um, feel free to contact me. Uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, and I, uh, <coughs> I hope to see you again.